Um, thank you very much, and nice to see you all, um, uh, all the new faces uh, today. You hear my voice at the back? Um, um, I'm Peter, I'm the uh, honorary treasurer of the Institute, and uh, I'm very pleased to have you today uh, in this uh, hopefully relaxing Friday afternoon, as well as a fruitful um, sharing today. Uh, we have four speakers uh, uh, beside me. Uh, we have uh, Professor, Professor Carlos Fertinus. Uh Professor is um, actually the pro uh, Professor of Data Science in the HKUST. Here is the town center of the HKUST. And we have also Mr. Terence Yip. Terence is the senior manager of the uh, AIA group. He specializes in people analytics, so he's the expert in, in the uh, company. Uh, we have Mr. Sh Mr. Xing Li. Uh, Mr. Xing Li is, uh, Mr. Li is the cloud solution strategist uh, about data, about AI, he's the expert in the Microsoft. And of course, we have the co-organizer, Ms. Maria Hui. Uh, Maria is the Chief Operating Officer of the Microsoft Hong Kong. Uh, we will have our sharing by each of the speakers in such sequence. So we hopefully have a very fruitful and concise uh, evening, uh, afternoon, and then after that, so we'll have a Q&A session that we can share the overall questions together. We have some questions already um, through the, the mobile, and uh, uh, we also have your sharing your questions uh, on site. So we will have a warm welcome to all the speakers, and we welcome Carlos to have, a, have his uh, uh, first sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction and for inviting me to be a part of this amazing panel of speakers. Uh, today I'll be giving a talk, basically giving you a gentle introduction to data science. But uh, before I begin, I would like a sh short show of hands uh, from the audience. So if you do not have a background in data science, or you're not data scientist at all, I want you to raise your hand if you're not. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so essentially, as you can see, most of you may not have a background in data science, but one of the core messages of this talk is that you are all, in fact, fundamental to the success of any data initiative. And in fact, I'm not alone thinking this. So this is a recent article from a Harvard Business Review, and the title of the talk essentially says that data initiatives cannot just be for data scientists. And the reason for this is that the people that are going to be using these systems are not data scientists, right? The people that are going to be using these systems are regular employees, people from human resources, right? People from operations, people that are selling. And so if the data scientists do not work closely with this type of people, research has shown that the data initiatives have a very high chance of failing. And so if you take a closer look at what, talk, at what the article says, one of the core responsibilities of data teams is to actually work closely with regular people every day and to equip them with the tools they need to formulate and solve their own problems. And so I think this talk, at least from my point of view, is trying to do that. Basically, it's trying to convince you that understanding data science is very important for your jobs, even if you are never planning on doing data science yourself, yourselves. That's fine. You don't have to be data scientists to be involved in data initiatives. And in fact, without your involvement as regular people, the initiative is doomed to fail. Okay? And so let's start with that. And let's start perhaps with the most simple question, which is, what is data science? And so for that, I want to I wanna start with a, with a simplified example. So imagine that we have this human recruiter. And this recruiter is taking a look at a bunch of different job applications, right? So we're going through resumes, maybe we're going through LinkedIn profiles. And what the human recruiter needs to do is decide for each and every one of them whether to call them or not for an interview. Now, nowadays, we have systems that could do this task, right? And so we call this an artificial intelligence system or an AI system for short, mostly because this system is capable of performing a task to which we would normally attribute human intelligence. So that's what we're calling it an AI system. And I'm going to basically make a leap here and say that the data science process 
is just the process that is going to enable us to create these type of systems from data. And so here in my historical data, you can see that I have a bunch of different profiles. Some of them were uh, successful applications. Some of them were like failed applications. And so the idea here is that the data science process is a systematic way of looking interesting patterns between profile characteristics and whether uh, an application is successful or not. And so this could be something like, oh, turns out that certain writing style from the resume is very predictive of this person having a successful application. Or maybe it's something like, oh, years of experience matters if you just recently graduated, but it stops, doesn't matter anymore after, after 15 or 20 years of experience, then having more years of experience doesn't really matter, right? And so the hope here is that the data science process is going to be able to automatically extract these patterns from the data, and these patterns are going to be the ones that are going to be incorporated inside the AI system. And so if we step back a little bit and look at the process from a more abstract perspective, we can think of data science as the field that just studies this systematic extraction and use of knowledge from data. And so I want to focus on each of these components of this definition. And I want to start first by talking about knowledge. Essentially, what, what do we mean by using and extracting knowledge? And so from a human perspective, you can think of knowledge as the facts and understanding that we accumulate throughout our lives with experiences, right? And so this human recruiter over here keeps seeing applications, keeps seeing applications, sees this application is successful, this is not. And so over time, you get some understanding of how to evaluate whether an application is gonna be successful or not. And so we're gonna call that knowledge. And evidence is a piece of data that we're facing and it's gonna allow us to make some sort of decision. And so with my knowledge, I see a new application which is the evidence, and I need to make a decision, which is calling somebody for an interview or not, which is an inference, essentially, right? It's kind of like a reasonable guess. And so when we say knowledge, we are trying to do something like that. We're trying to get a system that is built based on these set of experiences, which is just previous applications that were successful or failed, successful or failed. So we're just gathering these type of experiences. And we're hoping that this knowledge, this pattern that is extracted with the data, coupled with some evidence, is going to help us make some inference, some reasonable guess. Okay? Of course, where does this knowledge come from? It comes from data, right? And this point is critical because garbage in, garbage out. If the data does not generalize to the people about which we're making decisions, then the pattern is going to be useless, right? And so we have to think to what extent this data, this pattern that we're extracting is going to be helpful for the situation in which we're going to be applying the model. And so for instance, if in my data set, I only have ever interviewed engineers, I only have engineers in my historical data, and then an accountant comes in, can I really infer if the accountant is good or not if all my experiences are about engineers? That's actually a question for a human resources person. I don't know the answer to that, but you might, right? And so that's why it's so important to get people like you involved into these type of processes. Now this brings us to the last component, which is the systematic extraction. How does this box, this data science process works? And so this is a set of fundamental steps that we normally follow when we are building data science solutions. And it turns out that a lot of people put Lots of emphasis on this part. It's called machine learning, is what you would do to extract the knowledge from the data. But honestly, I don't think that's the real reason why people fail at all, at all in these projects. I think it's actually much more important to think about the business goals, right? Basically understanding why are we even building this? Do we even have the right data to build this thing? How are we gonna extract this from all the systems that we have? and then integrate it together, and then clean it, and then transform it, which is actually where 80% of any data scientist time goes into. How can we measure success, right? How do we even say that this model is improving our ability to make decisions 
and perhaps most importantly, how will the system be used? Which goes back to my point that the people that are gonna be using the system are not the data scientists. So they really need to sit down with the people that are gonna be using the system to ensure that the solution is gonna be relevant. So when I say data science process, I'm not really talking about the technical part, right? Like it must be all these things so that the knowledge that this track is useful. But because I want to give you a gentle introduction, I'm gonna jump into this machine learning thing, basically to give you an introduction to what, what does that even mean. So if we go back to the AI system, recall that the input is data about an individual and the output is an action, like call somebody for an interview. And you're gonna see here that there's like four different fields. So we have data or we know the value for fields X1, X2, and X3. Those could be like fields from the job application, like is this, this, does this person has job experience? Are they an engineer, are they an accountant? So these are things that we know, but there is some quantity that we do not know, something that we would like to estimate or predict, which is whether the application is gonna be successful or not. Now if we look inside the AI system, let's take a look at the head of the AI system, it usually looks like this. Basically, we're gonna have some model that takes in uh, the uh, attributes, it's gonna make a prediction of the quantity that we do not know, and then it's gonna transform that quantity into an action, right? And this decision logic could be as simple as, oh, if the probability that it's gonna be successful is above 10%, then just call for an interview, right? But it's something essentially that says, given some probability of success, should I call for an interview or not? So machine learning, is the process that we would use to learn this statistical model, basically to learn something that is gonna make predictions for us. And the critical thing here is this side of the picture, that historical data is the critical part. Because if you notice, it has this field completed, the Q, we know the Q. And so if we want to make predictions, it is critical for us to have data on the thing we want to predict. And once we have data on the thing we want to predict, then the machine learning is gonna be an algorithm that uses statistical techniques to automatically find relationships between X and Q. And those patterns that we are finding are incorporated here in order to make predictions within the AI system. And so for those of you that have some expertise with econometrics or statistics, you may be thinking that this sounds familiar. And the reason is, is this dirty secret. Essentially, pretty much all of these modern AI systems are based on statistics. And then when we couple them with these computational methods right, that can scale to large data and can, can have more complex models, then we may start calling it machine learning. And then this artificial intelligence system is just the use of these models, these statistical models to perform tasks that normally only humans could do, right? But in reality, if we are being frank, is mostly statistics, okay? So I hope that uh, with, this talk, with this talk, I've convinced you about the importance of business for data science, the core pillar to what data science is. And if you want to learn more, I encourage you to take a look at this book, Data Science for Business. I think it's very beginner friendly. Or even consider the Masters in Business Analytics where I teach at HTC. <laughs> Thank you very much.